Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite. And today I want to show you how we can relight any image with the hard mix blend mode. We're not going to do this with uh, hue saturation. We're not going to bump up saturation at all. We're going to amplify the colors in our image very naturally with the hard mix blend mode so that we can get an alpine glow image like this to, to amplify that alpine glow and look like this and get a beautiful natural alpine glow and hand paint it all in the process. Let's jump in. I got a lot of cool stuff to share with you and I've built some actions for you, but please don't download them yet. I want you to watch this so you can understand how they work. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can relight any photograph. Now, this typically works best with landscapes, specifically where you've got that sunset type of, you know, alpine glow kind of look or any kind of sunset uh, even works on, you know, bright blue sky photos. Basically, any image that you want to amplify the colors and make them look as rich as they did when you were on the scene, you can use this. Now, we're going to be using the hard mix blend mode, and I have created a series of actions for you because I understand that this stuff is like a second language sometimes. But what I want you to do before before you download those actions, please watch this whole video. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe because I do this stuff all the time and I know you're going to love it. So essentially what we want to do is if you ever see a photograph like this, where you've got this beautiful alpine glow that's just shining on the side of this mountain and you want to make it more rich and more vibrant, you can actually use some of the colors that are available in the scene to create that look. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the blend modes and I'm going to go to hard mix. Now, hard mix is an interesting blend mode. It actually uses linear light as its base. OK, and linear light actually uses linear dodge and linear burn. So essentially what we're going to be doing with hard mix is adding an extreme amount of contrast to our image using that linear light as its base with uh, the color that we select. And it's not going to look good at first. So this is what I'm going to tell you to do. This is the basic way to do it. Let's just hit hard mix. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my brush tool and then I'm going to press alt or option and I'm going to click on a color that I want that alpine glow to be amplified by. So I'm going to click on this color right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start brushing on that place that I want that glow. And you're like, whoa, dude, Blake, that is absolutely hideous. And I know I get it. It is uh, basically the, what the hard mix blend mode does is it really only allows you to see eight colors when it's at its maximum potential. But maximum potential for this is not controlled by opacity. So let's go to our opacity and drop this down. As we drop the opacity, we still have a reddish color. And it's really weird because we actually didn't choose a reddish color. We chose more of a, a burnt umber type of color. So how do we get this to work? Well, if we take our fill and we drop the fill down, that's going to start reducing the calculation or increasing the amount of colors that can exist within the hard mix blend mode, completely different than opacity. So let's drop this down until we get this to a point that we like it. So somewhere around 15% should probably do it. And we'll press enter. Now let's click on this. There's the before. And here's the after. And what you can do with this is you can continue to brush in other places where you want that glow to exist. OK, so you can brush over here, brush over here and keep brushing on down. And then we'll go over here and brush over here to get that glow on that side, too. Now, you might think this is a little too much because I think it's a little too much as well. Even if you want to hit the side of this a little bit if you're using a pen, you can use pressure sensitivity. So you don't have to push quite as hard to get the effect that you want. If that's too much, it's cool. You can drop the fill a little bit more or now that you got the fill dialed in where you want, you can drop that opacity a little bit. So it allows it to blend a little bit better. So that's the easiest, simplest way to do this. You just grab a color that's in this image somewhere and you just paint on the image where you want that glow to exist. So we took that orange color from the glow and just made it more glowing. Now, here's the cool part, too, is that if you double click on this, you can also use blend if with this. So if we move this over, we can actually make sure that those darkest dark areas don't get quite as affected by splitting that and feathering it with alt or option and feathering over and feathering that over too. Sweet, huh? Pretty cool. So here's another thing you can do with this. If we were to go and grab our solid color fill, I could choose any color I want. It already has the default color that I set up here. So let's just choose something like, like this and then we'll press enter. Okay. Now we'll change this to the hard mix blend mode. We'll drop this fill down to about 15% as we did before. Okay. And now we have a color overlay that's doing that, but it's filling the whole thing. So how can we paint this in too? Well, if we click on this mask and press command or control I, it's going to invert it. 
Then with our brush set to white, just like normal masking, we can start brushing on this to bring that in. And that's with a color fill. So the color fill is a great option too, because here's the thing with the color fill is that you're not stuck with the paint that you chose. So we chose a physical orange color to paint on this in the last option, right? Well, if I double click on here, I can change this color to anything I want to get that glow to be exactly where I want it to be. Maybe I want it to be more of a reddish glow. Okay, cool. I can do that too. I can borrow and I can steal a different color to do that as well. I know it's not the exact Alpen glow color that we had before, but look at the beauty of this glow. Here's the other cool part is that because this is set to hard mix, it's going to add that color, but it's also going to bring in a serious amount of contrast that we can then paint on those clouds and even in the background. Now you'll notice that it's not making that quite as orange as the wall. Well, why is that? Well, that's because based on the, the math that's happening there and the colors that are available underneath this, anything that's orange is going to get more rich and deep with that orange color and everything else is just going to get amplified with more contrast with a slight hint of color added along with it. Very cool stuff. So what I've done here is I've created a series of actions for this. I'm going to go over some other things with you here on some other images so you can see how this works. These actions are in this folder called hard mix relighting. Again, you can download this if you're on YouTube in the description below or in the card above, you're going to see a link where you can download uh, these hard mix relighting actions. Now the actions that I've created are both based on fill, which is that solid color fill and the brush. So let's go over to this image and I'm going to go to the hard mix fill uh, warm and just press play. What it's going to do is it's going to do all that stuff for you already. Okay. So it's really what it's going to do is it's going to set you up for success. It's already got blend diff built into it. It's already got a mask built into it. It's already setting you up with a brush. All you got to do is brush in where you want this. Now, this was a, a shot that I did in Yosemite. This isn't a stock image like the last one. I photographed this in Yosemite, loved it, but it just wasn't right there. So how do I get that beautiful morning glow of the sun coming up? Well, I'll just paint in that warm fill along the side. It's already set up for me. Once I press play, it's already set up and I can just delicately paint alongside uh, the the trees here along the top of them to make it look like that sun is just blasting across I said this was about relighting right this is about relighting that image to get it to look like you wanted it to look uh, when you were there we all saw it like this but man just, our camera just couldn't capture it like that so if we look at the before and the after here's the before here's the after the difference between what I showed you and these actions though is that there's this thing here called called color overlay if I click on that it's going to show me in magenta where I painted, which is a really cool technique. It shows me in magenta where it's painted, and it also shows me what my blend if is doing here. So it's blocking out the darkest dark areas and the brightest bright areas. So if I paint along this here, it's not going to make that get any brighter. Why not? Well, that's because it's already a very bright color and hard mix does some really nasty things to the darkest dark areas and the brightest bright areas if we let it have its full way with the image. So if we double click on this, you'll see that in the blend if settings here, we're really protecting our uh, darkest darks and our lightest lights and really only allowing this to let, uh, spread through our mid tones and into the brighter areas to give it that natural glowing style look that we would see from the light actually casting across the canvas. Okay. So let's click on another one here. So this is a sunset image. So if we go to hard mix sunset and press play on that one, this is going to allow us to just, again, start painting right away and allow that sunset to get brighter and better and more beautiful. Okay. Look at that. It's great. Awesome great stuff. Now there's another thing I want to show you with this too, is that this color is a little bit different. So if I double click on this, this color is actually a little bit um, deeper and, and more rich to allow that sunset to get more contrast along the way. But the cool thing about sunsets like this is that you can get creative with your painting. You can just kind of paint in very delicately along the water here. So we are creating the, the casting sun across the water, maybe a little bit more contrasty where the sun is hitting right there and then make this just kind of uh, go along the highlighted areas of where that sun would be hitting and pressing harder in certain areas. That's the benefit of using a, a, a tablet and a pen is that I get to dictate the pen pressure. Look at the before and the after. Now, this isn't a finished processed image. This is just my camera raw settings before I did all my artistic processing. But look at how you could really use this to get a really nice sunset look as well uh, to really amplify a sunset that wasn't really amplified to begin with. So here's another one though, the hard mix with gradient. So here we're using a warm gradient to give us the same effect. The cool thing about a gradient is that a gradient will uh, allow the darkest dark areas to get one color and the brightest bright areas to get another color. And then those colors can then uh, kind of blend in between as they, as we have mid tone areas. So 
again, if you click on this and then you click on your gradient here, you can change this to any gradient that you might have in your gradient palette to uh, make that sunset a little bit better via gradients. The key thing here is that it's hard mix set to fill, and then we use the blend if to block things out. That's why I understand there's a lot of stuff going on under the hood. That's why I created these actions for you. So if we go to something like this, let's click on this image, and I'm going to go to the, the brush. Now, if we click on the hard mix warm brush and press play, this is actually setting me up to brush. So it's going to be using whatever color I have over here and available to me. So you might be thinking, well, why would I use that? Why wouldn't I just use the solid color fills? Well, the cool thing about a brush is I can press alt or option and I can click on this color of magenta and then I can start brushing in that area that I want to amplify that magenta in. Okay. And along these clouds, maybe I could press alt or option and click on this orange and amplify the orange right here. I can press alt or option and amplify this blue a little bit more here. Alt or option with this blue up here and paint that in up in the corner here. And then with these, you know, rays of light that are coming out, I might be able to grab a lighter color here and just kind of spread those in between. And look at that. I mean, here now we're we're getting in there. We're almost like a like a painter on our on our image that is just allowed to just have fun with the colors that are available in the canvas. Alt or option, click here and paint. Okay, and then maybe I'll alt or option grab that orange and then just paint along here and, and brighten that up with some orange and then maybe hit this with some orange too. So if we were to go and change this to normal and put our fill up to 100, you'll see that we painted a bunch of different colors all over our canvas. All of them though, we're using the hard mix blend mode set to 15% fill with some protection measures in place for the blend if, and that's the result that we get. It's a very subtle thing, but this is a really critical element to, to getting the, that look and the light that you want without having to go to something like the hue saturation adjustment layer and bring up the saturation. This allows you to do it in a natural way with the hard mix blend mode using contrast and color at the same time. Because as we said before, the hard mix blend mode takes its base from linear light. Linear light takes its base because they're contrast blend modes from linear dodge and linear burn. So essentially what you're doing is you're doing a kind of a hybrid dodge and burn with color and increasing contrast all at the exact same time. Now it is controlled by fill. So here, if I were to bring this fill up a little bit, it's going to get ugly. So you want to keep that fill pretty low. I would say somewhere between 10 and 20%. Get it dialed into where you want it. Like even at this 20%, that's okay. And then you can lower that opacity down a little bit. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. I hope you like this. Please comment on it, share it, tell a friend and subscribe. And if you haven't done so already, head to that link to go to F64 Academy so you can download these brushes. I will ask you to join my email list when you do that because I can give you all kinds of awesome stuff outside of what you're seeing in this tutorial. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy these actions that I've created for you.